Hi, so welcome to the next in our series of lectures for the Charlotte Perkins Gilman um, Module 2, uh, where we're going to be reading Herland, but also thinking a little bit about how Herland fits into a larger framework of ideas that were circulating around the time that Charlotte Perkins Gilman was writing. And so we lean back into Bellamy um, a bit, and I think you're going to find this next miniature micro bitsy lesson on Fourier um, very uh, familiar in some of its um, in some of its main ideas. So the idea of a planned community didn't come from Bellamy and nor did it come from the transcendentalists but it, it came from a guy named Charles Fourier. Charles Fourier was talking about these ideas long before the transcendentalists um, were, were, were trying to live them. As a matter of fact, some people believe that it was the English language publication of Charles Fourier, Charles Fourier's ideas. He's coming from France. I cannot pronounce his name correctly. I wish I could. Um, his ideas that he was publishing, he was a utopian socialist who was publishing um, much earlier than the transcendentalists were publishing and thinking. They finally get to read them in English in 1840, and they begin their experiments. And their experiments in utopian living certainly influenced what Bellamy was thinking when he wrote Looking Backward. And he in in influenced, in turn, what um, Charlotte Perkins Gilman was thinking when she wrote Her Land. So here's a quickie quick. I think I can do this in like three minutes. All right, so Charles Fourier, he's a French utopian socialist, and he just has one idea. He says, wouldn't it be better for all of us if we deliberately planned our communities instead of just seeing what happens when we all push ourselves together and let rich people decide um, what works for them and poor people just, um, and other people, people who don't have political or financial um, power, they just sort of get in where they fit in, you know? He said, let's think about it differently. And you might remember when we were listening to that podcast about the splendor of our public lives, where the urban planners who, it was a very new field, urban planning shows up at the end of the 1800s, um, 60 years after Fourier dies, right? And they're starting to think, well, let's think about what it should look like. We certainly shouldn't leave it to individuals to, to decide what our public lives look like, what life looks like um, around and outside of our homes. So Fourier had three major ideas to go with this idea of urban planning. The, and, and people loved these ideas. Um, he was unsuccessful for other reasons, and I'll get to that in a minute. But his main idea is that we, you know, if you're thinking about the Puritans or, or even just um, uh, societies that were run um, by um, Catholicism, there was this sense that when you had a social problem, it was a moral problem. Oh, these women have loose values. Oh, these people are sinners, right? And Fourier said, no, let's think about social problems as sociological. What are the factors that might lead someone to steal or to, to, to go into sex work or to, to do any other um, behaviors that, are, that were, were considered um, detrimental to society, right? And then he says, another thing which you may find familiar, he says, I love technology. I don't have any problem with going from an agrarian society to a society where most people are working in factories um, using, using technology and machinery. What I do have a problem with is if all of the profits and all of the benefits of that system go to just a few people at the top. Right? So that was the second thing he said. And the third thing he said is that if we're going to have universal reform, if instead of just having a little group of people who get together and make it perfect for themselves from this corner to that corner, this little enclave, this little community that's an oasis of peace while everything else swirls around it, if we're going to do away with that as a possibility and have a universal reform, we're going to need equality across class, he means socioeconomic class, race, and gender. So those were his like three big ideas. And um, here's a picture um, that I found online, and I, I will not pronounce it correctly, but it's this idea that you could build a city that was commit, um, connected by walkways. And by the way, if you've ever been to Minneapolis or some other places that are quite cold, we ha have here in the United States a lot of cities that are connected 
not by walkways, but by tunnels, um, which is sort of an interesting um, riff, um, interesting version of Fourier's idea of how we might um, manage our public lives for the splendor and comfort of all. So, um, so that's it for Fourier. Um, oh my gosh, I left out sort of the fabulous part. So if you look at this guy on, let's just say Wikipedia, he had some crazy ideas and I'm just gonna take 30 seconds to tell you about a few of them. He believed that wild animals would eventually become tame if we managed our human lives in a more organized fashion. He also believed um, in um, sexual lives that were not limited to one partner. And so he thought about sexuality as this force. He's like, you know, the way we're living our lives right now, we are imagining our work lives in ways that go against our desires. Nobody wants to be in a tiny room um, working at a machine all day long. We should start thinking about how we could manage our, our, our lives to sort of fit our desires so that people are working because they love working, because they love what they're doing. And so he decided, um, he, well, he didn't decide, he, he did some, some you know, Fourier style research and he said there are 800, well, there were 12 personality types. And if you combine them in a whole bunch of different ways, you came up with 810 possible personality um, configurations. And he said the ideal society would be made up of groups of 16 and 20, 1,620 people, um, 810 um, men who each one fitting one of the personality types and 810 women each one fitting one of the personality types I know I've gone past 30 seconds but this is so great and so he had this idea that if you put these couples together sort of in groups of 1620 that that was the perfect size like mini city and so there would be these sort of phalanxes which is a military term for just like a little battalion, a little group of people together for one purpose. And he said, and this was the perfect configuration because everybody would find something they wanted to do that the society needed um, to have done. So if you put it together the way Fourier imagines, he's imagining that there are people who love sweeping the streets, that there are people who love cleaning um, toilets, that there are people who love peeling potatoes, so that um, if you allow for all of the different possible human configurations and you put them in one place, all of the needs will be met, not through coercion, but through desire, that people will just be doing what they love to do. I'm going to tell you, this one laid an egg. None of the um, big um, uh, benefactors who were financing experiments in social living liked Fourier's ideas enough to give him enough money to, to see this thing into fruition. Indeed, even the transcendentalists who relied on Fourier's ideas, certainly the earlier three that I talked about, they relied on these ideas a lot in planning their, their um, communities. They couldn't go as far as his 1,620 um, personality types, um, you know, half male, half female, put into this um, community for, for the perfection of all. All right, I've gone past my time, but I just had to tell that last thing because it was so groovy in my mind. Thanks for listening and uh, stay tuned. There's a few more lectures. I hope they'll be fun and uh, short. Bye.